Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Dave. I'm a licensed podiatrist. I'd like to thank you for watching my video on my Frugal Foot YouTube channel. Well, this video is going to be a little bit different. I don't typically make videos on anything other than feet, but in this instance, I decided to make this video anyhow because I'm hopeful that it will help someone else out who might be experiencing what I am post-operatively. So about a month ago, I was in a bicycle race and Right afterwards, I noticed that I had developed a groin hernia or an inguinal hernia. I was able to see the surgeon right away, and when he evaluated me, he discovered that I also had a hernia on the other side, and so I decided to have them both repaired, which I had done three days ago. Now, I don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Um, there are other videos out there on post-operative um, experiences, and I will leave a link to what I think is a very, very good video on post-operative experience. Um, but the problem with that video is that it's nine years old and his surgery was different. This individual had an open inguinal hernia surgical repair. Mine was done robotically. And with the robotic technique, the way it works is three small incisions are made in the abdominal wall and then instrumentation like robotic arms are put into the abdominal space and the repair is done from the inside. There is no incision made through the muscle or the skin over the actual hernia. Now, before we get started, I found a very good video on YouTube, and I'll leave a link to that as well. There's a very good video. If you're considering having this done, you can watch a robotic repair of, a her of an inguinal hernia. So check that out. I thought it was very, very informative, and I learned a lot from that. When you have robotic repair, the way, the, the, the trick here is that you have to move the abdomen, the abdominal wall away from what's called the peritoneum, and that is the lining of the organs. To do that, gas is injected basically into, that, into the uh, cavity there, and that creates the space for which the instruments can work. That way the instruments aren't perforating any of the organs or creating any other kind of damage. So that's very, very important. The repair is very straightforward and it, it seems very, very easy. You can watch that on that video. But afterwards, all the instrumentation has been removed and they try to push that gas out, but obviously there's gonna be gas that remains. Now, when I went home after surgery, I was, you know, you're a little dazed from anesthesia and I got through the first night, really not too bad. I had to wake up pretty much every hour to pee but the pain medication covered it and I was very, very comfortable. Post-op day number one, the, that's the first day after surgery, um, you know, your anesthesia starts to wear off and I started experiencing a lot of gas pain. Now I have had an appendectomy that was done open procedure. That pain was different. That was more of a shearing and burning pain. And that lasted for a few days, maybe like two days and then it was better. This is different. This, this pain was a gas pain. It just felt like very, very bad gas. And there's nothing that you can do to relieve it. It's hard to stand up straight. You feel like you're kind of crunched over a little bit. I was encouraged to walk after surgery. I did go off for a 20 minute flat, slow, easy walk outside. And it was comfortable doing that, just kind of moving things around a little bit but I basically rested the first day and just dealt with this gas, gaseous pain. I did not have a bowel movement. I, I felt like I really wanted to, but you know, it, I don't think it really would have mattered because it's, that's not the gas. It, the, this gas is in your, your abdominal cavity. It just needs to be absorbed. So by about three, four o'clock in the afternoon, the pain had increased in intensity. Um, and by the time I went to bed, that's when I decided that I needed uh, more than just Tylenol. Um, but I had been provided with, with proper pain medication and I took a little bit of that and was able to sleep through the night. The second night was more difficult than the first. I was in bed for about 10 hours and I did sleep again seven to eight hours, but it was broken up. But I just stayed in bed because I didn't really want to get up and move. Um, I did sleep on my side. I did not sleep on my stomach. Um, and I am a stomach sleeper, but I was comfortable on my side. Um, when I got up, it was a little bit harder to get out of bed the, for post-op day number two. 
Um, and But getting up and getting moving again, this time I walked for 30 minutes, the pain was a little bit different. It transformed from that gaseous pain, the gas pain was still there, but it started to develop more into like, I, I felt like I had been in a boxing ring and a boxer had just been punching my abdomen for like 10 minutes and I'm not a boxer, so I don't have that kind of, you know, strong stomach muscle like a boxer would. And it just felt really, really beat up. Um, by three o'clock in the afternoon, I was getting a lot of tension in my shoulders, in my diaphragm. It was just hard to take deep breaths because I had been, you know, any kind of extended talking, like even just doing this video yesterday would have been difficult. Um, but I got through that and certainly by nine o'clock at night, I was ready for bed again. Um, and I, again, took just, I actually just took half of a pill and uh, slept well through the night. Again, I was maybe 10 hours and got eight hours of sleep. It's important to rest. It's important to stay hydrated, drinking a lot of fluids. Um, but today was post-op day number three. I did walk again for a half an hour, this time in the morning and then a half an hour in the afternoon, and uh, definitely a big step forward. Um, the I can sit a lot better. I cannot wear jeans. Um, I just have pajamas on, and it's it, that's what's most comfortable. Um, here are my, what I've been permitted, and here are my restrictions. I can't go to work this week. Um, I can shower, but I'm not permitted to submerge for two weeks. I can't drive for a week. I can walk, but I'm not permitted to walk with any ski poles, and I am not permitted to ride my bike for a month, which is the tough part, but got to get it done. So I think there's been a big step forward. I finally had a bowel movement yesterday, and I had two bowel movements today, and that, that really you know makes me feel a lot more comfortable not, no, well, knowing that there aren't any bowel obstructions and just knowing that everything is kind of moving is, is good. The gas pain was much better. Um, this I'm, I'm recording this. It is 8:30 at night on post-op day number three, and I feel like I don't feel like I need to rush to bed, um, like I'm so tired. So uh, that's that's my experience so far. Three days after having robotic inguinal hernia surgery reconstruction. One last note before I end this video: I did decide to have a mesh closure for my hernia repairs. There are a lot of opinions online about whether to use a mesh or not, but I had discussed this with my surgeon. He recommended a mesh closure. Uh, being a surgeon myself, I just didn't feel confident that a simple suture closure was going to prevent a hernia from reoccurring, especially since I'm into bike racing and I do a lot of strenuous activities. Um, I know there are no guarantees that using a mesh will prevent a hernia, but it was just a decision that I decided to, to go forward with, and it's something that I'm going to have to live with. Hopefully, I won't have any problems. Um, I'm, feeling pretty, I'm feeling pretty confident that I'll be okay. So um, if you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. I think that overall, uh, just you know, stay hydrated, um, stay on top of the pain, and uh, follow your doctor's directions, and you should be, you should be fine, and, and good luck, and, and try not to sneeze, try not to laugh. Try not to cough, and if you follow those, if you if you if you avoid those three things, you'll probably be a lot more comfortable. So, this is Dr. Dave. Thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you on my next foot video.